on this tractor from the Harper Adams Community College, we are bringing you the Neo 09. And this month, we have the new electric class. We're going to visit the DHI Cup, and we have modified action, as well as finding out all about that event. That's all coming up on this month's RC Racing. Well, here on the Harper Adams Sharabang, it would probably cost £27 to get across the, uh, the river to Odense. Much of for us early this year to attend the DHI Cup. But that's certainly money well spent to attend Europe's premier indoor touring car event. Organised by Kim, let's hear from him. Kim Mendixson from uh, the uh, DHI organisation. Give us a bit of a story of the history of the DHI Cup. Yeah, started back in 2001, where we, um, for that, I travelled around to a lot of races and I was just like, think, why is all the races south of Frankfurt? I think there must be room for a race in the North, in North Europe, so I started to make a race. And the first year we were struggling to get people up here, get like 100 drivers for the first year. And then it's grown ever since. We have races from the east, from Japan and China, and drivers from the US and the United Kingdom and all of Europe. Yeah, you seem to manage to attract almost all the top European races, and as you say, occasionally we've seen Hara come over. Why do you think people like to come to a sports hall in Odense? Uh, I don't know. Maybe I think it's about because of the Danish people. Maybe we try to do something else than all the other races, like taking the races out to uh, to eat, do some dinner, and so it's not only racing, it's also a little bit fun because people is surrounded around that they don't remember what race to do like one month ago. So it's, we try to make it a little bit different. Right. What's, what's, the, what's the future for the DHI Cup? Yeah, I like to. Uh, at the moment we have all of, mostly all of the top drivers. So um, I want to move the... Uh, make it better for the spectators and get more spectators out because I think if you look at many races there's not many spectators and at this race we expect 2,000 spectators throughout the weekend so we want to get it out to the public Kim, thanks a lot Back on the track, hot action, and we're about to now bring you the first modified A final, and here it is with your race commentator, John Hindhoff. So that is the pole position car of Alexander Hagberg, the X-Ray, with um, a little help from his friends on the front of the grid. Next back, Mark Reinhardt, double world champion, Tamiya Timo Linu in three with the X-Ray. Another Tamiya in four, this is the Dutchman, Gilles Grosskamp, then Victor Vilke. It's another Tamiya, isn't it? Yes, it is. Mark Fisher is in position number six. There is his car. Should be able to spot that one. Nice colour scheme there. It's a Corrali. Another Tamiya in seventh is Jonas Kerup. Yannick Prumper, Tamiya. Just a 15-year-old German driver there in eighth. Ninth, Steen Graveson. And Krista Anderson is on the back of the grid. Reasonable smattering then of local drivers in this final. There's the buzzer and we're off and Hagberg gets a decent start from pole position in that green machine. Reinhardt the German in second place, he knows all about the big occasion, he's putting pressure on early. Lino in third place is not too far behind either. So they come round this very technical circle and there's the lead change! That's a tremendous piece of driving by Mark Reinhardt, Lino's gone through into second as well. Timo Lino got into second, Hagberg the pole man down into third and he's gone off! He slipped out of fifth position as Grosskamp and Wilk have come through too. So Reinhardt then leading out from Timo Lino. What a mistake by Hagberg. Had the pole position and has thrown it away down to fifth before the end of the first lap. Reinhardt just now. Look at the difference now in his driving style from that early lap when it was all pressure and the car was very twitchy. Now he's settling into a bit of a rhythm and just trying to ease out a bit of a gap on the second place driver, Timo Lino, which he is doing. Oh, great shot there through the hairpin, back on the start, finish straight. And there's Hagberg behind. Well, that's uh, Vilk, isn't it, that he's behind at the moment. 
trying to make up some ground from earlier on in fact he's back up into fourth position I think looks like we've lost Grosskamp from that uh, top four he's dropped back down into fifth position and at the moment this battle for third is what's key oh there goes second place lena has gone out rolls it in the infield so now Vilk up to second, Hagberg back up to third and pressuring. Let's have another look at that. Oh, well, those curbs there, very, very harsh. You don't have to hit them hard at all. You've got to give them a wide berth. And you saw there that as soon as the cars got onto it, it was unsettled and over onto its roof. And Victor Vilk is the man who has profited by that. Hagberg, Paul Sitter. Back up to third, well we know he's got the pace over a lap, but what can he do about this second position? He'll be kicking himself, already had a little dive down the inside there, but nothing doing. Meantime, great news for the German, Mark Reinhardt, he's out of there. Oh, little touch there, oh there's carnage, absolute carnage. Three cars and they're still banging and bumping and boring going on behind. Well let's see how this all started, a mistake there by Vilk. Vilk bounces off the sidewall, takes out Hagberg. Here's another look at that little touch. Oh, dear me, that was a bit naughty, wasn't it? And you can see there that everybody has continued, a testament to the strength of these machines. And Vilke still, Vilke still in second place. Amazingly. But Reinhardt's disappearing off in the distance. We're not seeing much of him. There's Hagberg. Now, I think that's Mark Fisher, is it, who's got up through the field? Or is he about to be lapped? That uh, very distinctive flamed car Hagberg now battling on his own there so he's trying to pull his way back through the field that is Fisher isn't it so he sneaked up there through all that action you see that on the replay but clearly up from sixth position to hold down a podium at the moment I think that's the battle for third it is indeed Vilks ahead of them there's the yellow car just going through the right of the picture. So that's third, fourth and fifth. Hagberg right in the middle of the sandwich at the moment, trying to attack and defend at the same time. And Linu trying to fight his way back there in that purple and blue machine. We're not seeing Mark Reinhardt, the German, at the head of the field with the Tamiya because oh dear and there's a mistake as well by Mark Fisher but he's kind of got away with it completely airborne just a minor loss of concentration there Hagberg smelling blood now right up on the rear of that car now this is a three car battle now for third position and it looks like we're getting is that Grosskamp as well who's coming back up onto the back of those cars as well so we've got four cars now battling for the last podium position tremendous stuff here at the DHI Cup brought to you by Morfars and there's the dive down the inside is it no can't get it done Hagberg again having that difficult situation where he's trying to find a way past the car in front that of Mark Fisher and at the same time he's defending and he's had another little look there and that's again another contact there well he's not shy is he and he still managed to hold on to that position meantime Lenu and Grosskamp are at it as well, banging side panels. And that's allowed Mark Fisher just to pull away slightly. Ahead of him, you'll just catch a quick flash of yellow. That's Victor Vilk. And Mark Reinhardt's gone, by the way. He's made his bid for freedom. We'll see him at the end, I think. Don't take our eyes off what's going on here for the third podium position. That's a pretty good battle going on for the minor positions too. Now there is our leader and as you can see he's well ahead of the rest of the pack and really since he's pulled away at the start he's had no problems whatsoever and he comes through to a very very impressive victory indeed he made the move early and made it count here's the decisive moment Hagberg goes off over the curb that's the opportunity that Reinhard needed he goes through despite a little tap into the lead a lead he never relinquished so the 
Leg one results in the DHI Cup brought to you by Morfars. Sees Mark Reinhardt take it from Victor Vilkin second. Mark Fisher up from sixth to third. He took advantage of all the carnage around him, didn't he? Hagberg, the pole man, disappointingly down in fourth position. The top six made up by Lino and Gilles Crosscamp. Here at Neo 9, there are two things you've not seen before. The first one is the sun. It's lovely and warm for once here in the middle of Telford. But also we have a new electric class running. We've asked Adam Skelding, our old friend, to tell us a little bit more about how you turn your IC rallycross buggy into an electric buggy that smells sweeter, is quieter, and actually can go faster. Talk us through the differences about running effectively the same chassis, but electric power. Yeah. Uh the most common uh, electric buggy uh, for 1.8 now is a conversion kit where people just take out the uh, engine, the fuel tank and maybe some of the radio gear and just uh, put in battery pack, motor and speed control. So kind of the same sort of setup from 1.10 or touring car, a uh, little bit bigger battery, we're running 14.8 volts which is either in one 14.8 volt pack or we have two 7.4 volt packs side by side. So. A lot of the stuff that you'd normally run in touring car or in one eighth buggy, uh, in one tenth buggy, sorry, all fit in this car. Obviously, it changes the complete way the car works. Electric power is delivered in a very different way from IC power. Yeah. Um, for me, it's really easy because I do a lot of one tenth racing, but the power is delivered without, there's no clutch engagement. You just go through the same centre differential, so that's still there. So you cannot can alter all three diffs just like on a normal nitro car but the power delivery is much more linear it's, for me I feel it's easier because I'm used to it nitro guys probably don't like it as much um, but for me it's, it's much more linear power and you're not having to blip the throttle to keep the clutch engaged you, the power's there when you want it now you've got big voltages and you've got a lot of weight it looks like the, the key problem appears to be keeping everything cool though yeah, um, obviously it's fairly new technology, only in the last maybe eight, ten months of the brushless uh, conversions really started to take off. And the big problem is the motor's not hugely bigger than the uh, one-tenth motors that we used to see. So keeping 14.8 volts through the same size motor generates a lot more heat. And the current, major current problem is keeping the heat down in the motor so people are cutting body shells out, putting more fans in. But I'm sure as time goes on and technology moves forward, the motor will get better, more efficient, and we'll start to see everything come down and it'll be much much more user-friendly than it is now. Alan, thanks very much. No problem. Well, now Alan's explained it all to us. Let's go meet our pole sitter for the Electric A final at the Neo 09. It's Ryan Mayfield. Ryan Mayfield, you obviously liked it so much last year. You're back again to a shed in the middle of Telford. Yep, I'm here again. We, this is my uh, third Neo Buggy race and uh, fourth time to England, so it's fun. 
And you're joining in the new class, you're also running the electrics. I mean, I know that America, they've been running for a few months longer than here, so how is that going? How is the electric conversion um, arena as such going in the States? Um, it's going pretty good so far. It's uh, still an expensive class to get into, I think, is the biggest thing for the consumer. But uh, it's going along pretty good at my local track. We usually have like eight or ten cars a club race. And then last week at the Silver State, I think there's 40 entries. So all the major companies are getting into it. So, you know, people are going to follow. So it's cool. How different are the cars going around the track? Between, what are the differences between the electric and the nitro? The electric car is just a lot more responsive. It's a lot more consistent. Um, our car has a lot more steering compared to our gas car because there's more weight on the front end. Um, but mainly it's just a lot easier to, you know, easier to take care of. The nitro doesn't get everywhere, obviously, because there's no nitro motor. And uh, you, don't have to, just, you don't have to worry about tuning. You just plug batteries in and you go. You know, it's easy. It's fun. So here's how they line up on the grid. Ryan Mayfield in pole position from the USA, from the Italian Riccardo Rabiti. First of the Brits is Darren Bloomfield in third. No Danny Vega Frias for some reason. Hasn't turned up. You can see the gap uh, on the grid. In fifth position, Philip Gushi and the top six made up by the American Ryan Cavalieri. No one has ever adequately explained to me the role of the ninja here, but let's hope he gets his sword out the way, and he does, as Ryan Mayfield leads them off on the first lap. And already a little bit of uh, disastrous action behind that's caught up one or two of the top runners there as Mayfield makes good his estate. Oh, doubles the back whoops there. That's fantastic stuff. Look at the height that they're getting from there. And the second place driver, Ricardo Rabiti, just losing control in the air there. That is the danger, of course, of getting so high. As off goes the American Ryan Mayfield into the distance. And look at the lead. He's pulled out already. Coming round the end of the first lap, and he's almost got the whole of the first straight. And Dini Haas, oh dear, there's more problems there. Now, these drivers are really psyched up for this, and I think you can see there's a little bit of tension on the sticks. Watching the battle for second position at the moment, Rabiti. There he is with the second place at the moment. And that's Cavalieri, who's come up from sixth to third. And he's putting a bit of a challenge on here, and he goes. Up into second there. There's again a bit of a problem behind. Well, I'm quite surprised that there's so many mistakes early on here. The drivers have had a lot of practice on this. Uh, speaking to them, they seem to like this circuit. It is very challenging. It's a very difficult first couple of corners. So it's Cavalieri now in second position. Now, here's the battle for fourth. And it's... Now, who have we got here? That is Gushi in the with the yellow wing. Behind him is Lee Martin, British driver. Behind him, dropping down from third position, is another Brit. That's Darren Bloomfield in the blue buggy. And uh, he's trying to make back up positions here after that first lap scrimmage. Marvellous stuff. That's what we've come to see. Big air. Love it. Gushi still holding on to that position. To fourth. And then... Lee Martin, just trying to get closer to him. Meantime, back with the battle for second position. And it's still Cavalieri who holds on to that from Rabitti in third. Oh, is he a bit closer this time? Ricardo, just trying to put a bit of pressure on. Into that infield section again. We're not seeing much of Ryan Mayfield, who's our leader. And... That is because he's rather driven away from the rest of the field. Very interesting, looking at these lap times, actually. These 14.4 volt electrics are actually just a tad quicker than the IC buggies that we've seen in the past. Now, a bit of a problem there for this battle for second, just going past the back marker. And was that a slight loss of concentration there? No. Held on to it. All of these. Oh, and there is another little challenge there. And both of them are off the course for a moment. But yet, they have still not changed position. I was about to say that uh, these cars are conversions from the IC machines. And the drivers are clearly still getting to grips with them. Lots of low-down grunt, as you'd expect from the electric motors with uh, bags of torque from zero. Really punch out of those infield corners. I think that's what has uh, been the 
Real downfall of some of these drivers. And there's the pass for second. Nice stuff. As Rabiti goes back through. Down the inside. Classic piece of overtaking. And can he hold on to it? As he comes back towards us. Squirting on. His second position is definitely the best battle on the circuit at the moment. Mayfield. He's gone. He's disappeared, made good, he's escaped, and unless he has a problem, can't see anybody getting anywhere near him. But what concentration from these two drivers. Cavalieri now with it all to do then in third position in the red-bodied buggy. Still able to control the cars in the air with the torque of the motor. You'll see the drivers throttling and maybe just hear them throttling off and throttling on just to try and get the pitch of the cars in the air so that they land under control not perhaps quite as fluid as the IC cars they do seem to stop rather when they hit the ground and again this is just people getting used to the new technology and at the moment it looks like Rabiti is pulling away he's got himself into a lovely rhythm here and you can just see behind Cavalieri is pushing a bit harder now further back down the field that is the 11 car of Lee Martin being set about there by I think Darren Bloomfield the two Brits having a battle for fourth position and Bloomfield's gone through but it's not all over yet by any stretch of the imagination Bloomfield in the blue car and Lee Martin in the red has got back down the inside. Oh, and he just touches the side. Oh, lucky. Quickly back on all four and straight back into the fight. This is for the first place off the podium and the best of the Brits as well. And Blumfield, you know, in that blue car will be kicking himself. Got involved in that first lap scrimmage. In a decent starting position from three. And his times have been OK. And oh dear, a mistake there by the 11 car of Lee Martin and that has given the position, I'm, a, I'm afraid now, to Blumfield. There's our leader and in fact he's going to be our winner because he's the only man on the lead lap. He's lapped the entire field. Ryan Mayfield, we haven't seen too much of him but he has won the A final and won it in some style. Confirmation then of a dominating victory for Ryan Mayfield from the States with the team associated buggy ahead of Rabiti and Cavalieri who had their own little battle didn't they and fourth position finally going to Lee Martin that last gasp pass that we saw by Darren Bloomfield actually didn't count for anything because the leader had already lapped them so they in effect had already finished by them they didn't know it neither did we but Lee Martin gets fourth and Darren Bloomfield is in fifth top six made up by Philip Gushy. Well, next month we'll be staying in glorious Denmark to see if Mark Reinhardt, the current Touring Car World Champion, can claim the DHI Cup brought to you by Morfars. Across the pond, well, across the channel really, we'll also be here again in Telford and we'll see if another world champion, Atsushi Hara, can bring home the Neo 09. That's all on RC Racing next month. Absolute carnage!